Ryan is out at least six weeks. And on defense, strong safety Morgan Burnett, who led the team in tackles last season, returns from a left calf injury out. All right, thank you, Michelle. One of the most anticipated games on the schedule, Mike McCarthy in his 10th season as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers. He's won a Super Bowl. They are fantastic at home. The Packers last year were unbeaten here, 8-0 in the regular season, and then won that playoff game against Dallas, the Des Bryant game. Steven Hauschka to kick off on a beautiful night. And back deep, Ty Montgomery, a rookie out of Stanford. Lambeau Field rocking their home opener. And ready to get it going. The NFC champions against the Packers. And we start with a touchback. So Aaron Rodgers goes to work from the 20. Let's take a look at the Packers starters. Aaron Rodgers, Butte Community College. Eddie Lacy, Alabama. Randall Cobb, Kentucky. Devontae Adams, Fresno State. James Jones, San Jose State. Richard Rodgers, Cal Berkeley. David Bakhtiari, University of Colorado. Josh Sidden, Central Florida. Corey Lindsley, The Ohio State. TJ Lang, Birmingham Brother Rice. Don Barclay, West Virginia Mountaineers. Outstanding offensive line, of course. One of the guys missing, Jordy Nelson, was hurt in preseason. Underwent knee surgery, and that's the reason they brought James Jones back. As we start with a run, and Eddie Lacy getting a hand on him is Bennett, so he can go no further than the 21-yard line. So the last time Aaron Rodgers threw an interception in this ballpark would be 2012. 418 consecutive passes at Lambeau without a pick. It's almost hard to comprehend, isn't it? It is. Lacey with no gain, so second down and ten. The Packers won the toss, so they have elected to receive. And on the opening drive, Rodgers is flushed out. And then throws, extends the play, and Richard Rodgers makes the catch. Richard Rodgers, the tight end, played at Cal. And he's a little bit shy of the first down. It'll be third down. Well, clearly Aaron Rodgers wanted to go to the right side, but it's that craftiness inside the pocket that gets it done so often. And then they go no huddle real quickly. And Rodgers is going to go deep on third and one. And you have contact, but no flag. Earl Thomas back there with Richard Rodgers. So Aaron looks around. No flags. Fourth down and inches coming up. I'm not sure what happened to Rodgers on the tail end of this route. He was running the right way, and then for some reason he flips the other way, and the ball really landed back over the other shoulder. I think just maybe a little case of nerves early on. And Thomas got there coming over the top. Meanwhile, the Packers on fourth down and a half yard send in the punting unit. Tyler Lockett is going to go back for Seattle, and already we've got a timeout taken on the field because they're working on Cliff Averill. I think there was a challenge flag there. Green Bay is challenging the ruling yep. on the field that there were 11 players on the field on third down. Timeout. So Gene Steratore will take a look. He'll go under the hood, and we'll see about the challenge, whether it's a first down or not. Challenged by Green Bay. We think they're going to win this. Aaron Rodgers went to the line so quickly after that pass for Richard Rodgers. They had 12 guys on the field, as you can see. That's Averill trying to get off the field. And we saw him being attended to on the bench. But he's the 12th guy. Here comes the snap. He is still inbounds. He's offside anyway at that particular point. And McCarthy is sharp enough with his coaching staff to see that. After and here comes review, the call. It has been determined that Seattle had 12 men on the field at the time of the snap. The ball will be placed at the 34 and a half yard line on the hash mark near the Green Bay's bench. Green Bay will not be charged with its first timeout. The result is the first and ten. So Pete Carroll going wild on the sidelines, but that was created by Aaron Rodgers getting the team up there so quickly that Seattle couldn't get the extra guy off the field. You know, the bizarre part about the replay system is the guy who knows the least about it is typically the head coach who has no idea, <laughs> has no replay angle of anything. But it was pretty clear when you saw it, that's what Steratos saw, and so it's a first down. 
And now Rodgers is so good on that hard count. You got a free play, so he goes deep downfield. That's Cobb, and Cobb takes the ball to the 45-yard line. So Aaron Rodgers, knowing he has a free play, what he does is he sends everybody downfield quickly. That time it's Cobb first down. Well, we saw this in the championship game. We've seen it throughout his career. Outside. Defense, number 72. Penalty is declined. The result of the play. First down. And it has been a major factor for Michael Bennett throughout the course of his career. He is one of the most dynamic players in the game, but he tries to jump the snap count, and Aaron Rodgers will take advantage tonight, and that will not be his first effort. So at the 44-yard line, Rodgers dancing and looking downfield. And then throws it away. And, and Chris, you remember in the Super Bowl, what people forget, I mean, you've got the Butler interception. But then New England had the ball at the one-yard line, so there was a chance for Seattle maybe to create a safety or whatever. And it was better to jump offside, giving Seattle the extra, uh, or New England the extra five yards. Exactly right. And every backed-up quarterback is going to try and do the same thing. You would have thought that somebody would have been screaming, you know he's going hard count here, and they still jump. Second down and 10. Now you've got James Starks. In the backfield, they come up in the pistol formation. And Rogers gives it to Starks, who's been around since 2010. And he is close to a first down. Let's take a look at the Seattle defense. Michael Bennett, Ailey Taylor High School, Ataba Rubin, Iowa State, Brandon Meebane, Crenshaw High School, Cliff Averill, Boilermaker, Bruce Irvin, Almost Heaven, West Virginia U, Bobby Wagner, D, Utah State, KJ Wright, Mississippi State, Richard Sherman, Stanford, Deshaun Shedd, Portland State, Earl Thomas, DBU, Texas, Kerry Williams, Washington. Of course, the big absentee, Cam Chancellor, and we understand there's been no contact between the team and Chancellor for 12 days in terms of a contract. And Rodgers again with a penalty. Flag on the play. Throws that one out of bounds. Illegal use of hands. Hands to the face. Offense. Number 71. 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. Left guard, that's Josh Sitton. See right there, the hands to the face, just to the right, pretty easy to see. Good call by the officials, and even Sitton, I think, knew that he did it. Tried to yank his hand out of there at the last second. Of course, we're already seeing now Aaron Rodgers moving around a bit. Was not able to do that because of injury in the championship game, and it certainly was a factor in a game that was so close. The first and 20. Four-man rush, open underneath Devonte Adams, second year out of Fresno State. He gets to the 33-yard line. One of the um, interesting decisions for tonight is: uh, Will Richard Sherman play in the slot or not? Typically, he just stays wide left. Uh, last week in the game, he came in and played the slot receiver, did well doing that, but now he's back outside of Marcus Burley playing the slot. And Lacey back in there, and the big bull is about a yard shy of the first down. He runs as hard as anybody. Of course, the guy on the other side, Marshawn Lynch, is very much like Lacey. Third and one. Powerful guys, and they're going to try and hit this seam right in here. Pull out and around, and when these two guys get to the secondary level, it is almost frightening. They are powerful, and DBs typically want no part. Now they come up with a third and one from the 25-yard line. It's a toss to Lacey to the outside, and Lacey gets spun down, but appears to have the first down. Farrell wants it marked a little bit shorter where they'll probably put it. K.J. Wright makes the tackle. And the new defensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks after that first down. We'll take a look at him. Is one Chris Richard who took over. The last two defensive coordinators became head coaches. Gus Bradley is now at Jacksonville. And Dan Quinn is with the 2-0 Atlanta Falcons. Good job to have, huh? Yeah. Put you in the spotlight. It's pretty big to overcome that uh, hands-to-the-face call and pick up that first down. So from first and 20 to... First and 10 now at the 24-yard line. And was it sitting again? Team 
Patriots territory has already had a busy three Delay and a half engaged. minutes. Offense, five yard penalty, still first down. And the, the new play caller for Green Bay, McCarthy's in his 10th season. He's called the plays for nine years, but now he's turned that over to Tom Clements. Been the quarterback's coach, been around a long time, and it is Clements with the chart and into the helmet of Aaron Rodgers. First and 15. Downfield and incomplete. Intended there for Randall Cobb. Covered there by Marcus Burley. Their nickel back. It'll be second down and 15. Here's the new nickel guy we were talking about right here. And Marcus Burley does just a perfect job on this. Those inside fade routes from the slot. Very difficult to cover. But you could see he cut off at the pass there. And on the other side, Richard Sherman, we know what you typically get with him. Don't expect a lot of balls thrown that way. Starks for Lacey, they put him in motion in the slot now. Empty backfield, five wide. And Rodgers is going to begin to take off and then fire and it's caught. Touchdown, James Jones with a flag down, but it's going to be offside against Seattle. James Jones released by Oakland, released by the Giants in training camp. Signs with the Packers, scores two touchdowns last week, has a third call back on a penalty. And scores here. Defense number 72. Penalty is declined as a result of the play. Touchdown. Effectively, that's a 30 yard play because of an offside. Richard Sherman up here on the top side. Now, the Green Bay Packers, and we've seen it a thousand times, whenever Aaron Rodgers knows he has somebody offsides, he's going to move around. He's going to take a shot down the field. And here it is a simple jump offsides leads directly to that touchdown. Already there have been more extra points missed in the NFL in two weeks than there were all of last season. The 33-yard extra point is good. 80 yards, 10 plays in 4.15, and Green Bay takes the early lead at Lambeau. So Green Bay takes the early lead, nothing new for them at Lambeau. And Mason Crosby sends it six yards deep. This is Tyler Lockett, who's been sensational in preseason and even a run back last week. Flag comes in at the end of the play, drafted out of Kansas State, and looks like the reincarnation of Devin Hester already. Well, there's Rodgers, who he, he created everything. Return. Holding. Holding. Return to number 58. 10 yard penalty, first down Seattle. Aaron Rodgers created the, the two offsides and the 12 men on the field. Here Watch all these guys looking inside. The minute they see Michael Bennett jump off sides, they fully understand at that point they're taking off down the field. Now what's Aaron going to do? He's going to move around. He's going to buy some time because he wants to take a deep shot. He wants to go for the whole thing. He knows it's a free play. Seattle cannot allow that to continue happening in this game against Aaron Rodgers. After the penalty, backed up to the 10. So that's where Seattle begins. And a pass to the left side. Tyler Lockett makes the catch, and he is tackled by Sam Shields immediately. Wilson, fourth year in the league, one of three quarterbacks, 10,000 or more passing yards, 1,500 or more rushing yards. In his first 50 games, this would be his 50th. Won the job as a starter. Played at North Carolina State and had one more year of eligibility. And he spent that in this state at Madison at the University of Wisconsin. And already he has to take a timeout. So a rough start for the Seahawks on both sides of the ball. Let's take a look right now at the... Seattle offense. Russell Wilson from a whole pack of badges. Marshawn Lynch, Oakland, Ice City, California. Derek Coleman, UCLA. Doug Baldwin, Stanford. Jermaine Curse, Washington. Jimmy Graham, the U. Russell Oakland, Oklahoma State. Justin Britt, LHS, MIZ. Drew Nowak, 
Western Michigan. J.R. Sweezy, NC State. Garrett Gilliam, Penn State. The Seahawks were in danger of having 12 men in the huddle, and Wilson saw it, and that's why he took the timeout to avoid the penalty. So it's second down and 10 from the 10-yard line. Crowd already in full throat. Here's Lynch. Loss of two. B.J. Raji hurt most of last year. Big nose tackle makes the stop third and 12 upcoming. I barely recognized B.J. Raji when I was watching him on tape. This looked like the guy that first came in the league. The guy that got six sacks or whatever it was. He got a lot of pressure last week. He's lighter. He's motivated because he sat out last year. And if he is back to form, he will be a huge asset this year. Took care of the center, Drew Nowak, on that play. Of course, in the Jimmy Graham deal, they had to lose their center. And in that trade to New Orleans is Wilson now. A, another timeout, I believe, was taken. Green Bay took this one. They did. So Green Bay took the timeout. All kinds of crazy stuff happening at the outset of the game. With this first timeout, it will be a 30-second timeout. You know, Chris, it's week two. Nobody's going to the Super Bowl tomorrow morning, but you think ahead. And last year, because of the tiebreakers, that's why Seattle got home field. They had the same record as Green Bay, and what a difference that makes in January. Yeah, and what Clay Matthews tell us, he said, hey, come on, man, everybody's been trying to tell you guys all week this doesn't mean anything more. That one hurt last year, right? That one hurt. And this is an emotional crowd, an emotional fan base. And this team has come out here tonight, and you can feel it means just a little bit more because you're talking about the team that went to the Super Bowl two straight years, and you're trying to get there. So you want to knock them off right here in your house. Good start for the Packers on both sides of the ball. Third down and 12 now from the eight. Lynch. Wow. How's that for three defensive plays? Nick Perry makes the stop there. Fourth and 15 from their own five now. One, one thing that's always paramount when you play against Marshawn Lynch, you have to protect this cutback. You've got to seal this off on the backside because that's where his big plays come from. There's Nick Perry sitting right there to make the play. It will be on the linebackers and those defensive ends to stop that cutback tonight. John Ryan from the back of the end zone. Mike Hyde falls to the fair catch on the Seattle side of the field. Here comes Rodgers from the Seattle 44. Last year, these two teams opened the season in Seattle, and at the end of the game, Richard Sherman was yawning because they didn't throw at him once. Then in the championship game, they threw at him twice. Completed one for six yards. Tonight, already thrown at once, the completion, the touchdown to Jones. But the risk was very low because it didn't matter what happened. Even if Richard Sherman made a play here, you just come back and mark off the five-yard penalty. He had the free shot. Did Rodgers, took advantage of it, and now he has the ball for the second time tonight at the Seattle 44-yard line. Starks in the game. Kuhn is the fullback flanking Rodgers. And a miscommunication back there, but Bennett can't get Starks. Here's a penalty flag again. We already had a, a bunch of them. Meebane makes the tackle. And we'll hear from Gene Steratore once more. Holding. Offense number 63. Penalty is declined. Second down. That is the center, the second year man, Corey Lindsley. It's a very good offensive line, and I don't know exactly what's happening there, but uh, mm. we'll pay attention. Lacey getting a little work done, but James Stark certainly 
extremely capable, but this Green Bay offensive line, as good as there is, of course, we're going to keep an eye on tonight the right tackle, Don Barclay, replacing Brian Balaga up front. We're taping Eddie Lacy's ankle and foot from the 48 on second and 14. That catch is made at the 45 yard line, and then going backwards is Devontae Adams. Burley makes the tackle. So Adams is a guy who began to emerge last year, made some big catches, second year player out of Fresno State. Played there with Derek Carr, who led open to a big win earlier today against Baltimore. Now he figures to be even more prominent in the absence of Jordy Nelson. 42 inch vertical jump. He was dunking at age 13. Third and 12. Go, go, go. 319. 319. Four man rush. They run a stunt up front. Rogers able to get through it and around it and takes the ball to the 37. He's a little short of the first down. Bobby Wagner will make the stop. It's going to be fourth down and three. On the outside, it was close. John Barclay is going to take April right around, and Rodgers felt it just enough to step up and through. Let's see what they're going to do here with this one. Well, they, they're going to line up to kick the field goal, which would be 54 yards. Crosby certainly capable of that on a fairly windless night. And a 54-yard field goal attempt is good by plenty. Six fifty-two left in the opening quarter, and the Packers are up early, ten to nothing. Fox River, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Beautiful night. Summer winds down. And Mason Crosby to put it in the air. Ten to nothing Packers. Lock it seven yards deep. Great coverage. They take care of the rookie at the 13. Let's take a look at the Green Bay defense. Michael Pinnell, Colorado State. B.J. Raji, Boston College. Mike Daniels, Iowa. Julius Peppers, North Carolina. Clay Matthews, USC. Bay Palmer, Illinois State University. Mike Neal, Purdue University. Casey Hayward, Vanderbilt. Morgan Burnett, Georgia Tech. Ah, Clint Dix, the University of Alabama. Sam Shield, the U. That defense coordinated by Don Capers, who's been here with Mike McCarthy since 2009. So their first drive resulted in minus five yards. Now they start from the 13 and Lynch. And they take care of him again. They gang tackle him. And that's Clinton Dix coming up from his safety spot to lead the charge. Well, they're going to try and make you believe they're going to have two deep. And watch what happens. Comes right into the hole. You look like you've got all kinds of space right there. And there he is, Clinton Dix. Both these safeties played very well in that championship game. Of course, ha, ha Clinton Dix had the two interceptions in that one. Morgan Burnett had what looked like was going to be the game-winning interception, even laid down on the play. And uh, in hindsight, that was a bit of an oops. <laughs> Second and eight. Now they put a fullback in the game. That's Coleman in front of Lynch. And the pass to the outside. That's a short gain only there to Coleman up to the 15-yard line. Maybe no gain at all. Burnett, who was hurt last week back in the lineup, makes the tackle. Yeah, and they were talking about Morgan Burnett and how important he is to this team. Not only can he play down and help against the run, but they say he is the structure of our defense. He's the guy that gets us all lined up and we feel good about him. Remember, they've had a lot of shuffling at inside linebacker. Clay Matthews not used to being there. Nate Palmer there now for Sam Barrington. So very important piece on the back end. Comes back from a calf injury that kept him out of the game in Chicago. It's third and eight from the 15. Wilson steps off the spot, deep downfield, and the catch is made by Doug Baldwin, who got free in front of the Seattle bench. Big first down, their first of the night. A gain of 32 yards. Well, it's just a, a just completely blown coverage. I think right here, I believe it's the only way that could happen. Sam Shields is going to fall on the underneath coverage. Maybe it's 
Casey Hayward that was supposed to stay with him, but it was very unusual, looking more like a zone. And against that look, you don't ordinarily see wide open players, just a blown coverage. To the 47, first down. And Wilson, the protection that time, and that pass is incomplete, intended there for Jimmy Graham. First time he's been targeted, Sean Richardson covering. Of course, Jimmy Graham, a star in New Orleans ever since he came into the league, one of the Breeze's favorite targets, and one of those, you know, wacky off-season deals. You don't see that many in the NFL. It's not like baseball, where you see a ton of them or any other sport. Very few big trades. But Max Unger went to New Orleans along with a first round draft choice so they could get Jimmy to Seattle, second and ten. And Wilson, who averaged about eight yards a carry last season and gained more than 800 yards, close to a first down. Well, and this is what we didn't see out of Russell Wilson in the game last week, and I think it's such an essential part of this offense because when people start to crash down, if he doesn't run, that means Marshawn Lynch is going to get caught from behind, and it happened several times against the Rams. So it didn't surprise me early on here that Russell Wilson was going to pull one down and take off and run. Game of 10, first down at the Packer 43. And they bottle Lynch up again. Pendle makes the tackle. No gain. Second down. Seattle last year. Best running team in the league. Of course, you have Marshawn Lynch, so you know you're going to be at or near the top. But then you throw Wilson in there, gaining over 800 yards on the ground, and they led the league with a, an astonishing 172.6. You know, now, of course, you throw Jimmy Graham into the mix, and I think they're still figuring out how to use him best. There's no foul for 12 men defense. The defense had 11 men. It was all the plays of first down Seattle. Jimmy Graham said he was shocked. He had no idea it was coming. He got a call from Sean Payton. Said, hey, look, you know, how you doing? What's going on? You're trading. Yeah, Sean, Sean's <laughs> opening line was, this isn't a joke, man. Right. I guess they have some kind of relationship where they tell a lot of jokes. And uh, apparently Drew Brees didn't think it was a joke either. And his agent, his agent called him. He said, hey, look, look at it this way. There's no state income tax in Washington. <laughs> Three receivers to the right, second down and ten. And Lynch with a big hole that time, and he gets tripped up after he gains about seven. Nick Perry got a hand on him, otherwise he might have broken that all away. And that'll make it third and three. Well, the backside, I think Clay Matthews was going to try and jump that. They did a little cross route inside. Nate Palmer tried to get back over the top. Uh, he was clearly inexperienced. You could tell a week ago he had not played much inside linebacker. And they're hoping a big jump out of the other inside linebacker, Nate Palmer, tonight. Spread them out. Five receivers in this set. And timeout, Green Bay. Second choice timeout, Green Bay. A 30 second timeout. Last year we were here when Clay Matthews, they moved him inside from the outside. So what about? against the Chicago Bears last week. He lined up on the left side six times, the defensive left, the right side 18, and in the middle 51. So they will move him around, obviously. Now, would you call him the reluctant middle linebacker? I mean, he's going to do it, and he's yep. happy to be a team guy, but I thought his line summed it up pretty good. He said, I like hitting quarterbacks, not fullbacks. And yet we saw when he was moved to the inside linebacker position, what a difference it made for a team that was really struggling to stop the run. Definitely. The second half of the season, a whole different Green Bay run defense. Last year, third down and three. They spread it out again. And Wilson fires incomplete. And, well, Matthews is all over the place. And that time he's all over the tight end, Luke Wilson. So it's fourth down. Yeah, and he made the game-winning interception a week ago. And he's... A little like Troy Polamalu was out there. You know, he kind of runs around. You never really know for sure what he's going to do or where he's going to be. But his speed, as much as you want to rush that guy, his speed on the back end can save a lot of big plays. Steven Hauschka, career long, is 58 yards. This will be a 54-yarder. We already saw Crosby on the other side. Kick one again, very little win. And Hauschka's kick is good. 
upright. 3-13 remaining in the opening quarter. Seattle gets on the board. It's 10-3 Green Bay. Indeed. Ten to three, Green Bay on top. The teams are trading 54-yard field goals, and now Seattle to kick off with Hauschka to send it down in the direction of Ty Montgomery. Packers will start from the 20. Much of the conversation is about Aaron Rodgers. He puts up remarkable numbers and he stays healthy. Here's part of the reason why. Not only can he throw from every sort of different angle and he practices all those sort of crazy arm angles. Remember somebody else that used to do that? That yeah, right there, Brett Favre. And watch the way Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers both, they like to throw with their feet off the ground. And we were talking to Aaron about it and I said, you know, how do you do that first of all? And he was explaining, he said, but it, it really helps you avoid injuries because most of the injuries come when your feet are planted, somebody rolls into you. So just a little trick he stole from Brett over the years. He threw a basketball chest pass last week in Chicago on one play. This is Starks. Gain of six. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Eddie Lacy just got carted into the locker room. Mm. He is questionable with a right ankle injury. Got retaped completely under the shoe and over the shoe. Tried to put weight on it and couldn't, so they've taken him to the locker room. But again, questionable, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. That is huge. The guy, of course, uh, Eddie Lacy, one of the best backs in the league, 85 yards yeah. and a touchdown last week at Chicago. And uh, we'll get a oh. further report, I'm sure, on him as soon as we can. As Starks now takes the ball up to the 32-yard line. Starks, very experienced, drafted in the sixth round in 2010. Played a lot in their Super Bowl win against Pittsburgh, so very experienced. Good at pass protection, good at a lot of stuff. Yeah, and good at figuring out to run behind Josh Sitton. Seems like every time they ready, need ready, a big go. run in this offense, that's where they're going. Here Starks again. And wrestled to a halt. Ruben, big number 77, came over from Cleveland. Bobby Wagner got a new contract. That was quite the draft that these guys had back in 12. They got Wagner in the second round, and he's been magnificent in his three years in Seattle. And of course, uh, one round later came a guy named Wilson. Uh, when Wagner went out last year, their points per game average went up by almost a touchdown. Second and eight. And Rodgers extending, and then the ball slipped out of his hand. It'll be third down and eight with 124 to go in the period. Well, so far we've seen that Don Barclay has done a nice job over there on the right side. And Aaron Rodgers is moving around. But I think as the game goes along, you're probably going to see him settle in a little bit more. It was one of the surprising things for me when I watched the championship game back again. Just what a great job this Packers offensive line did. They probably have the best combination of guards in all of football with T.J. Lang and Josh Sitton. Those tackles aren't bad either. Third and eight. And Rodgers is going to take a timeout. Frustrated that he has to call it here. That's their final timeout. Third and final charge timeout of the, of the, half. Of the half. Green Bay. Minute and a half to go in the quarter. 10-3 pack. Wilson looking, lost it deep over the middle, over the shoulder, oh. catch is made, touchdown, game over. I don't quite know what else to say, folks. Russell looks, throws inside, oh my God, he's picked off at the goal line. Oh my word. That's what it sounded like on local radio, first in Green Bay, then in Seattle. Of course, a different deal in Seattle the first time and then New England the second. After the timeout, third down and eight for Green Bay from the 34-yard line. Play clock at two. Juggled snap. 
Rodgers rolling away. Caught Starks. But well short of the first down. Necktied there by Wagner. They're out of timeouts in the half. That's no big deal really in terms of the half. But remember it takes you out of challenges as well in the half. Yeah. Bobby Wagner and this is part of the reason he got that big money is that he has the speed to not only lock down a tight end but can lock down the speedy running back coming out of the backfield. Terrific player. Tim Mastay gets it away. Lock it now at the 14 yard line. Put all the way across the field. Finds a little bit of space but you have a flag. Almost any time you run laterally that far, there'll be a flag on the play, and there is here on the other side of the field. But this kid's going to be an electrifying player over time. It's amazing the number of big plays he's had already mm -hmm. through the preseason, and then had another one last week for a touchdown. First time he touched the ball as a National Football League player in a regular season game, ran it back a punt in St. Louis. For a touchdown. Yeah, I think he had three plays over 60 yards in preseason and came back with that one and like 57 yards in the opener. During the return, illegal use of hands, hands to the face, kicking team number 83. The five yard penalty that was added to the end of the run, first down Seattle. There's Jeff Janice on the outside and he's going against Richard Sherman who's on special teams and there you go right up underneath the helmet and Sherman irritated him enough to he drew the flag. And Ron Zook not too happy about it on the sideline. Had him pinned back. It's an interesting guy right there isn't it Richard Sherman. And we've been listening to athletes for a lot of years and he's one guy you pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Loves his weekly press conference. Almost as much as the media does. Yes, they do. Lynch and Lynch breaking tackles as he's done throughout his career, which began with the Buffalo Bills. And that's a first down. He takes the ball to the 48 yard line. I don't think I've ever seen a guy as big as he is that has runs as violently as he does but still has that finesse of that jump cut and re-acceleration. Uh, hard to argue that he may well be the best back in the league. And take us to the end of the quarter we're hearing that Michael Bennett the defensive end has also been taken back for evaluation to the locker room more on that when we come back. End of one it's ten to three Green Bay Sunday Night Football continues after these messages. Shot of Lambeau Field. Tonight's aerial coverage is being brought to you by Geico. To the strains of the Packer Polka, Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle Tafoya in Green Bay. I see you dancing to that last night. Not, not, not me, no, it was somebody else. Drew Esikoff, our director. <laughs> Wilson first down at the 48 yard line. And a tight roll to the right and open and making the catch there is Luke Wilson. Tackled by Morgan Burnett and a first down for the Seahawks. It's the old classic bootleg play going to come across this way but that is the impact of Marshawn Lynch. He starts making a couple of plays in the running game. And then you get that safety down there and they all just fly because you got it. You got to commit those resources or Marshawn Lynch is going to run over you. Then you get the speed Wilson on the outside. And Lynch, a lot of traffic there. DJ Raji makes the tackle. Well, the big news so far in this one is that they are not allowing Marshawn Lynch to cut back. And it is a plan of Dom Capers. They are committed to staying on the back side and not over pursuing. They know that the dangerous big runs come from those cutbacks. So they want to cut the field in half, force them wide, force them to bounce it to the outside just like he did there. And Dom Capers knows that's a winning formula. He's had one decent run of seven yards, but overall six carries for three yards 
for Lynch. And they had action on the left side. You're going to have a false start there. It looked like uh, as Peppers was ready to come across, Okun was moving. So who was first is the question. False start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Second down. So Kuhn, their best offensive lineman. Isn't it amazing, though, what Julius Peppers has been able to do in this league? I think he's 35 years old, had a sack and a half last week, and you just don't see any decline. I mean, the guy has come over here, and you think, oh, boy, here he is at the end of his career. He'll mop up a couple of years here. And But you know when the Green Bay Packers sign a free agent, it doesn't happen very often. They believe he has something left in the tank, and he certainly does. The most homegrown. I, mean, I can't think of a guy, a linebacker, 14 years in the league, playing at that level at that point. Wilson then steps up, and Wilson's going to get tackled by Mike Daniels at the 42-yard line. Nice stop there. Otherwise, Wilson would have gotten six or seven more third down. Well, that really wasn't what the Packers were hoping to do with Russell Wilson. They kind of got away with it that time. They don't want to get past where he is. So they don't want to be up in here. They want to stay at this level so they can fall back in here and make the play. You start getting behind Russell Wilson to make you look bad. Third down 16. At the 42, Fred Jackson comes into the game, the longtime Buffalo Bill. They picked up a couple of weeks ago. And the pass deep down the sideline with contact being made. Curse, the intended receiver. Demarius Randall, who is their number one draft choice rookie out of Arizona State, with the coverage. Well, we would have had a replay of the Super Bowl. This one bounces back in his lap. Young player, Demarius Randall. And this guy was a safety at Arizona State, a school you might know a little something mm -hmm. about. And they are really excited. It's not many guys that can play safety in college and then turn around and Make plays like that in the NFL, but they are excited about how physical he is and how good he is. Ryan's kick. Fair catch called for made 11-yard line. Micah Hyde. 12 and a half to go in the half. 10 to 3 Packers at Lambeau. Aaron Rodgers, you can do a half hour on all that he has done in his career. Took over as a starter in 08, 4 to 1. Touchdown interception ratio, which is off the charts. Highest in NFL history, minimum 15 TD passes. The next best at any point after throwing 50 TD passes. Go back to Dan Marino with a 3.1 to 1 touchdown interception ratio. I mean, you look at Rodgers, we mentioned before, hasn't thrown an interception here since 2012. League MVP last year. You name it, he does it. Uh, you know, if you just put the numbers up, Kind of hard to uh, argue with the idea that he may be the best quarterback that's ever played the position. And I think certainly Mike McCarthy has pretty strong feelings on that. He's been amazed with the way he's playing. From the 11. Take the starts. Throws, caught, first down, up to the 25-yard line. He hits Randall Cobb, and we go to Michelle. Well, Michael Bennett left the field for a couple of minutes to get that toe looked at. I'm told he is probable with some sort of toe issue. Apparently not serious, but they did change his shoes. They spatted up his feet. He now has his helmet on and looks like he's ready to come back in. Thank you, Michelle. Meanwhile, Demarcus Dobbs, 95, is in there in his spot for the moment. Remember how dominant he was in the Super Bowl? I mean, he was just borderline unblockable. From the 25 to the outside, and it's a good tackle made there by Deshaun Shedd on Devontae Adams. Talking about a fast release, watch this one. I, I mean, it's as quickly as he could get that fake done and back out and... And talking to uh, head coach Mike McCarthy, he was saying, you know, in the all-time list of strong arms, Rick Favre and Aaron Rodgers would have to be very much in the conversation. Second and nine, and Rodgers able to dance away. Extend the play, and turn would have been a sack into a little bit of a gain. K.J. Wright makes the stop. It'll be third down and six. On the outside, you've got uh, Richard Sherman on the young Devontae Adams all over him. Really nothing there whatsoever. This is the matchup they really feel like they need to win. Richard Rodgers on the outside against Kerry Williams. Everything was blanketed, so it's a nice option now without the 
the calf injury or the hamstring that he suffered both those last year now able to pick up a few yards running he's trying to go back to that hard count and they're not jumping now four-man rush against the green pass first down Devontae Adams to the 41 yard line tackled there by shed Well, got on the outside. Let's keep an eye on Don Barclay, 67. He's getting it done against Cliff Averill. Averill's been close a few times. But really, the difference in this game and the championship game is the mobility of Aaron Rodgers. I mean, you can tell that he knew there might be a little issue with Barclay up there. So far, there really hasn't been. But his movement in this game has been the difference. And it in, and Adams stays in, but he sets up on the outside. On the right side, he was limping after that last tackle and they run it on the ground to the 47 yard line Starks is there a little pushy shoving at the end of the play second down and five yep here's uh, Lacey and what happened to him you'll see the ankle is going to get rolled up on right there as KJ Wright brings him to the ground so Lacey's still in the locker room. Meanwhile, Adams did go off after that last play. Ty Montgomery comes in on the outside. Back five wide on second down and five. And it starts and starts, loses the ball. It's taken away, and the Seattle Seahawks have it. K.J. Wright, after the reception, was able to extract it, fall on it, and the Seahawks will have the ball just in Green Bay territory. And that hurts. James Starks had it and lost it. Give credit to KJ Wright. That was a great play. So the turnover, ball to 47. There goes Adams to the locker room. So he'll join Lacey back there. And here is Lynch. To the 42 yard line, which keeps on going. You think you have him stopped? 62 there is the center, Drew Nowak, who won the job in training camp. He is a Green Bay kid. Grew up here, family loves the Packers, loves the Packers, and his family here tonight, and they all have to wear Seahawks jerseys, and there they are. And they, they're part owners of the team because a lot of people, of course, in this area. Well, there's one Must be Packer a really fan. Yeah. favorite relative of some time. Yeah, how'd that guy get in there? Meanwhile, Josh Boyd, nose tackle, is hurt. Well, things started beautifully for the Packers tonight. That first drive resulting in a touchdown. Now you get a, a thumbs up, which is a good sign, obviously, from at least for the moment, from Josh Boyd, fifth round pick in 2013 out of Mississippi State, and the guy who backs up. B.J. Raji. So we'll get a report on Boyd. His play resumes. 840 to go first half. 10 to 3 and it's second down and 3 after a 7 yard gain. Dayton Jones now comes in to play the spot occupied by Boyd and you've got Lynch spinning and thrusting forward. And he's going to be close to a first down. Nick Perry makes the tackle. At least so far, they have not been beaten on the backside of these plays. But you can see right here that there is some room out there should Russell Wilson start to make the decision to take off and run. This is a young and a different offensive line than we've seen in the past as well. Justin Britt moved from right tackle into left guard. Nowak came in there at center. Gary Gilliam at right tackle. So this is an offense that had some issues with communication a week ago, and they're trying to clean that up tonight. Lynch did get enough of the first down. Now he swings to the outside. Uh-uh, there comes Matthews to sling him to the turf. Flag down. Already had six accepted penalties in the game three on each squad. And Gene Steratore is sorting it out. 
after the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, and the 64 of the offense. So 15 yards coming in the balance out. It will be second down. That is J.R. Sweezy costing him 15. Now the, I saw it. And I, I didn't see anything that looked too far out of place. Let's take a look here at the end of this play. Of course, down. All right, there. I guess he tried to dive on at the end of it. Yep. Thomas Rawls now comes into the game in the back of a rookie out of Central Michigan. Would be your number three running back. And Russell throws over the middle and playing the punch here is Baldwin. It's smacked down another flag. Nate Palmer, another flag again. At the end of the play. A lot of extra stuff. You know, it's an interesting call. Dix comes in with the helmet, but I don't think he's on the ground yet, and he's clearly a runner at this point. So the officials getting together. Who had what angle? What they want to know right now is it legal or not? Of course, the crowd is seeing the replay and they're figuring, come on, it's got to be a personal foul. There is no foul for a personal foul on the defense. The running back is still running at the time of the contact and the forward progress does not stop. It's a legal play and it will be third down Seattle. Good call, partner, right there. Crowd looking at it, they knew that it shouldn't be a personal foul and it was not. So it's third down and 21 now. now it gets confusing sometimes, but as long as he's a runner, Helmet to helmets, you know, part of the game. It's the defense's players they're trying to protect. So Fred Jackson, the newly acquired Seahawk, comes in, brought him in to spell Lynch and also play on third down a lot. And here he is on third and 21. I haven't seen much of Jimmy Graham so far. Well, yep, been pretty quiet. And Wilson's going to take off, get to the 45-yard line, and that's it. Fourth and long. Punning group comes in. Perry and Neal make the tackle. Well, you've got uh, the rookie, Marius Randall, at the top against Curse. Maybe an opportunity there. There's Jimmy Graham for something short and underneath. I thought they might just try and dump it down and give another opportunity for a field goal, but not quite enough. Ryan punts and those of the football drop down from the little backspin on it. Fair catch call for made at the nine yard line by Micah Hyde. 6-12 to go in the half and we go to Michelle. Well, Josh Boyd, who you just saw carted off of the field, is out with an ankle injury. Wide receiver Devontae Adams is questionable with an ankle. They were examining his left ankle earlier. And as you mentioned, Al, Eddie Lacy still hasn't made his way back out here, still questionable with his ankle injury. Right, thank you, Michelle. Lacy, of course, uh, as you all know, you follow football, especially if you have him in your fantasy league, one of the top backs in the league. So it's going to be Starks. And he's the only other true running back who's active tonight. The other would be John Kuhn, who's the fullback. Gets a couple of carries from time to time. Michael Bennett's in the game. First down from the eight-yard line. Starts. You know, the Packers have now had the lead at some point or other in their last 50 games. That's over three seasons. And tonight, by scoring in the first quarter, they've now scored in the first quarter in their last 18 regular season games, and that, for what it's worth, is an NFL record. They start yeah, fast. Push push they do. And they finish fast, too, normally. Second and three. And starts. Uh-uh. Wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Bennett there again. Initial contact will be third down. Comes Bennett off the edge. That toe wrapped up here. Going against Bakhtiari, who is a very good athlete himself. Ordinarily, if he has trouble, it's people using power against him. But Michael Bennett is just so quick and 
slippery inside. He just slides by offensive linemen. Matt and Wagner converging on the stop. Clock down to five minutes to go in the opening half, third and one. 319! 319 up! And Starks will pick up the first down. All right, so we always hear Rodgers go 319. Peyton, of course, with Omaha. We've heard Tacoma now. That's the new thing. 319? 319. I think uh, I always thought it was green 19 when Brett Favre was here. Let's take a look at one of the best players in football right here, Josh Sitton. He's going to get over here and get this pile moving and just run right along with Michael Bennett. It's fun to watch this interior play. I think they match up with anybody in the NFL. I really do. And Rodgers sends it incomplete to the outside. Randall Cobb nearest. It'll be second down to 10. Yeah, and they're getting a little thin at wide receiver now. I mean, you consider that uh, James Jones just got here a few weeks ago. you got Randall Cobb, who's out there playing with a bad shoulder, and he's uncomfortable. Ty Montgomery, the rookie's in there now playing some receiver. So there's not a lot of experience, not a lot of training camp time and practice with the group that's on the field right now, so they've turned to the running game. Packers dressed eight offensive linemen tonight, one more than normal for most teams. Starks up to the 24-yard line. Starks has now carried nine times for 35 yards in the absence of Lacey. I'll tell you, one of the guys that I thought really made a difference on this football team last year was Corey Lindsley. I remember interviewing him before we did the Seattle game up there, the opener last year, and you go, oh boy, here's this guy, first time ever, and he's turned into a, just a rock-solid center. Rodgers again slides away, caught, but short of the first down. It's Burley making the tackle on Randall Cobb. Well, this has definitely been a positive development here for the Seattle Seahawks. This guy right here, Marcus Burley's had a nice game. Randall Cobb is a Pro Bowl receiver and generally works out of the slot. And so far in this one, he's been able to hang right with him. So they're allowed to leave Richard Sherman outside where he's used to playing. This is a nice development for Seattle. Yeah, Burley last year in a deal with the Indianapolis Colts. And Nassau has to move to his right to take the snap. And he picks it out of bounds. They'll spot the ball at about the 25 yard line. Jason Day, huh? Tremendous. Just tremendous. From the 24-yard line, Lynch patiently finds that hole. Should be a first down 10-yard pickup. Seattle has two timeouts plus the two-minute warning. You know, it's so interesting to me that they make the trade for Jimmy Graham, and yet at least so far in this season, caught the touchdown last week, but in the first half of both games, really a non-factor. It seems like if you could establish him, it just makes it easier to run the football with Marshawn Lynch. Only been targeted once tonight, and that's Lynch dropping it. It'll be second down and 10 with 217 to the half. You know, because there's an argument with Jimmy Graham. He's not a, really a blocker. He was a basketball player, and he's known as a receiver. He's working hard to be a better blocker, but he's a receiver. So if you're going to bring him in here, you're going to bring him in here as that receiver and work him in. But even those guys were talking about it. Even Graham said, you know, I didn't do many scrambles when I was with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Drew's a guy that tells you exactly where he wants to be and he throws you the ball. Here, you've got to be a little more creative with some of Russell Wilson's scrambles. He comes out for this play. Luke Wilson is in. Here goes Lynch. Tough running. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix makes the tackle. And it will be third down and three as they let it go down to the two minute warning. Two minutes to the half. Green Bay on top of Seattle, 10 to 3 at Lambeau Field. It's the atrium at Lambeau Field, and we can tell you that here at the halftime coming up. Tom Brady threw for over 400 yards. Larry Fitzgerald had a great day as the Cardinals beat 
the Bears. Bob will talk about the drama in Dallas. You know by now they lost Romo for a few weeks with the collarbone. You know about Bryant, but they still won the game. They beat Philadelphia. Wild stuff in the NFC East. Two minutes, third down and three. And Lynch is not going to get the first down. They're doing a great job with him. Matthews and friends are there to make the tackle. Fourth down. In comes Ryan and company to punt. Well, you're just getting all kinds of penetration coming through here. First Matthews. And there's Raji right there. And they're playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Same thing happened at the end of the Rams game on that big fourth down play. Some of these short yardage situations have not been kind to Seattle lately. Ryan's kick. Fair catch call for, but they let it bounce and it skids into the end zone. Tell you that Sunday Night Football is being brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes to save you 50% on car insurance. By Toyota, let's go places. By the Martian, October 2nd, only in theaters, and by Subway. A Subway football, and there's nothing bigger, nothing better. Subway eat fresh. Packers new Tidal Town District, building up the area around here, entertainment plaza. 34 acres of land, and to the west of Lambeau Field. A lot of construction will be going on here. And you got Mark Murphy and the Brain Trust there, Ted Thompson, who've done such a great job here through the years. Steady, solid, consistent. Some teams rebuild, retool, or whatever. These guys just do it on the fly. And they've been to the playoffs now six consecutive seasons with four consecutive NFC North championships. Packers have no timeouts. And he's going to get sacked. Rodgers taken down. Bruce Irvin for an eight-yard sack. Now, well, clearly, uh, Bakhtiari here is going to get beaten to the edge. And... That is his one weakness. When you get a little power up underneath his shoulder pad, sometimes he can be pushed. Aaron just didn't have the room to step up that time. Got a flag. And again, something looked like they jump offside, so that enables Rodgers to throw deep downfield into double coverage, and that's going to draw a flag. That's Ty Montgomery who was there. You had Sherman bracketing him with Thomas. And again, with the offside coming, if you get a pass interference here, you'll take the ball all the way to the 36-yard line. And that's going to be the case. It's unbelievable, Al, that the entirety of the difference in this half has been offside penalties. There are two fouls on the defense. Offside, number 72. That penalty is declined. Cross interference, defense number 25. Stop on Sherman, 52 yards. Chris talked about it earlier. The minute he knows he's got a free play, everybody go deep and they'll throw it deep. And it's been Michael Bennett who keeps jumping off sides. He does it consistently. And then what happens? Aaron Rodgers scrambles around and they have thrown directly at Richard Sherman's side both times so you don't want to take a lot of chances with him but when you get a free play you will and the difference in this game so far have been offside penalties amazing and that play was a second and 17 and now you've got a flag thrown as the catch is made and Randall Tom is bounced out of bounds at the 10 yard line flag back at the 24. And Richard Sherman has been in the spotlight more in this half. Holding defense number 25. That penalty is declined. He's over the play. First down. So he gets the pass interference. Going to come right back. Going to get the hold on the back end of this thing right there. Grab of the shoulder pads. Caught. But Aaron Rodgers has been moving around in this half and buying so much time for his receivers. He just makes the game look easy sometimes. There they are with no timeouts going right down the field. Sherman back-to-back -back fouls. He had only three penalties all last season. First and goal. And that is caught. Cobb. He is stopped just short of the goal line. Clock ticking down. Again, they don't have a timeout. 23-22 counting down. 
Second and goal. Rogers staying very cool. Gets everybody set. And I think he was helping count. Referee in the back is counting bodies. And I'll tell you, they better make sure they had that right. A foul filled first half. Nowhere to hide now. Prior to the snapping of the play, instant replay initiated a review on the ruling of down by contact. We're going to review the previous play as it relates to a score. All right, so they'll review that to see if he was indeed stopped short of the goal line. No challenges inside two minutes. Also, they'll put some more time back on the clock. It's a good call. Down, short, no question yep. about it. Earl Thomas was able to stop him there. Elbow down, the knee was down two at yep. that point. You know, it's one of the weak spots, if you will, of instant replay when clock management becomes such an important thing. No timeouts, you're winding down, you're making decisions. Right. Seattle had to feel good about what's going on. And all of a sudden now they're going to initiate a replay and Green Bay gets a chance to go up and get settled. Right. Absolutely. Well, brother, it's just another crazy weekend in the National Football League. So many wild games to at a halftime coming up. You know, one thing we should say, though, and I know we're right here in an important part, but Pete Carroll after that Super Bowl was as impressive a leader as I've seen. That guy came out front and center there were a lot of people that could have been blamed for what happened at the end of that Super Bowl he said don't look at anybody else it's all on me he didn't go on vacation he didn't hide after the game he came out took it all on him and if Seattle comes back this year and turns into yet another championship team like they've been it's going to be due in large part to the way that guy handled the situation one of the things he said after the Super Bowl and a number of times during the offseason about the call and everybody, you know, saying that's the worst call of all time. He said, worst result, not the worst call. The interception by Butler. Here comes Sturridge. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down by contact at the one-yard line. There will be 13 seconds on the game clock, and the clock will start on my ready for play. It is second and goal, Green Bay. You have to snap the ball right now. Yeah. I thought they were going to put some more time back on the clock because it took a minute for... Second choice timeout, Seattle. Well, Seattle's going to take a timeout now. Well, you know, Carroll, the thing about Pete, I mean, he's the most youthful, what, 64-year-old that, that we've ever seen, next to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I wear it well. Right. Take a look. See all these guys on the outside, all these receivers that are looking in. And every time they see well, mostly Michael Bennett jumping off sides. Now watch what happens. Whatever their route is changes. Now they're all taken off going down the field and everybody gets excited. Defensively, everybody tends to hesitate and slow down. Here goes Aaron. It's what he's done all night. Going to scramble around. He doesn't want the little. You see Randall Cobb right in front of him. He wants the big shot because you don't have to worry about the interception down the field. I think Richard Sherman may ask Michael Bennett in the locker room, please don't do that anymore. It's putting me in a tough spot. Eighteen inches away, second down and goal. Rogers to the outside, flips it, and the pass is caught. But the two officials look at each other and say, touchdown, James Jones. And, of course, they will look at this as he makes the catch and was on the chalk. So, clearly, they'll look at this. Eight seconds left on the clock, and here's our first look at it. There was a lot of contact with Kerry Williams down the field. The official in the back didn't have his hat on. I wonder if James had stepped out of bounds. Oh, boy. 
Well, there's contact all over the place with the two of them. Meanwhile, he's, he's, his feet are in, but now his. Oh, boy, is that <laughs> close. Right. The right buttock could be down. Oh, wow. Over the outside of his. I think the feet thigh. are fine, don't yeah, you? They, I think the they feet are. are fine. They are. He's got to make control the two to the ground, which he does. Half a tokus. What can I tell you? Well, we had the butt fumble. Now we got the butt catch. We got the, <laughs> Get the whole thing. We cover all bases. I guess if I had to say, I would say he probably had touched down pr just prior to that catch being made. But is it enough to overturn it? Because they ruled touchdown on the field, right? Well, everything's being looked at as it always is by the gang in New York. The Packers and the fans were all looking at it with their hearts as they watch the replays on the board. How about what James Jones has done? That, that has a possibility of being, what, his fourth touchdown on the season? He went through training camp with the Giants, got cut, got cut by the Raiders at the end of the year. I just don't think you could say he had control. Oh, that's it's tight. But James Jones just came in here and luckily for him went through training camp with the Giants with Ben McAdoo, who used to be the coach here in Green Bay. So it was like he got a chance to get reacquainted with that system and then just fit right back in. And Aaron Rodgers lobbied hard for him. I want to say he's down oh, he's there. Not, he, I, I don't think there's any question about it. Yeah, I think he's out of bounds too. Becomes territory. After review. It has been determined that a part of the receiver's body touched out of bounds simultaneous with possession of the pass. When this action occurs, the ruling is an incomplete pass. The ruling is now incomplete. It will be third down and goal Green Bay. The game clock is at eight seconds. This is very interesting now. You want to run the ball and you get stopped. You have no time to stop the clock. You can't, you can't spike it. You're almost compelled to throw, but who knows? I mean, they could try to run it, but if you don't get in, I don't think you can get reset and stop and, and start the the play again before the clock goes to zero. They spread them out. They go five wide. Seattle has a timeout. Third and final charge timeout. Seattle, a 30-second timeout. Well, and Aaron is one that likes to move around in this situation. But if you do that or you take a sack, then you might eat up the rest of the half, even with an incomplete pass. So this is, he knows what he's doing. Aaron Rodgers, smart guy. Go back to it one more time. And here's a simultaneous thing again. You can see his hands really aren't even on the ball at that point. It's sort of wedged in there to his arm. So eight seconds, third and goal. Seattle gets the ball to start the second half. Now Clements calling the play in. He's the play caller after McCarthy handled that for the last nine years. Five one. Rogers over the middle, and that's incomplete. Bobby Wagner on Richard Rogers, no flag, fourth and goal. Really nice play by Wagner coming back underneath Rogers here. He had to get on the good side. Yes, that arm was wrapped around, but as long as Wagner doesn't turn the hip there, I don't see any of that. I think that's the right call, the right no call. And that is a huge defensive stand by Seattle just before the half. So McCarthy opts to come away with three points instead of maybe none. He's doing the chance to get the touchdown. Mason Crosby for a little chip shot, 18-yard field goal. But that is a victory at the end of that sequence for the Seattle defense. So two seconds to play in the half. All the regular season NFL games you won't miss any with NFL Game Pass. Listen live to game day audio or replay the games on demand. NFL.com slash Game Pass. Free trial. You had a chance to visit any of this? Uh, I have. And you, yeah. 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 And there, they first opened this thing up. Good. 
Yeah, I've been, Fun. been here before where it's a little chillier than I anticipated. <laughs> well, I already got the jacket Shopping on. What can I tell you? Jacket and yeah, yeah. The whole thing. Well, here's the long pass to set him up again. In the, well, that's started with the Bruce Not, Irvin sack. No, and yeah. Well, next time, jump different. off sides, and there you go. But Dif different play. I think we might have some other teams around the league following the example of Aaron Rodgers after this game with the kind of success he's had. He had the touchdown pass, came off a jump off sides. He had the 50-yard completion that led to another three points. So essentially 10 of the 13 points you see for Green Bay directly attributable to the fact that they Seattle jumped off sides. Packers 200 total yards in the half and Seahawks about half of that 104. Johnson ball 14 yard line and good coverage there by Green Bay on Tyler Lockett. That takes us to halftime. Green Bay leading by a score of 13 to 3. Hawks get the ball third quarter coming up next to you at a halftime after these messages from your local NBC station. Tonight's first half highlights are brought to you by the Chevy Silverado. Loses the ball. It's taken away, and the Seattle Seahawks have it. Starks had it and lost it. And he's going to get sacked. Rodgers taken down. Bruce Irvin. Chevy Silverado. High strength steel for high strength dependability. Halftime, Green Bay 13 to 3 in favor of the Packers. Trying to go to 2 0. Oh. First half buzz. Aaron Rodgers with 151 yards and touchdown. And those hard counts and set up a penalty, of course. The long pass, Russell Wilson. Nothing to write home about there. Nothing to write home about there either. Green Bay's done a great job on the run defense. Lynch, 29 yards, 12 carries. So the third quarter will commence. Seattle gets the ball. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth. Michelle Tafoya on Sunday Night Football. It's the rookie Tyler Lockett. Picked him in the third round out of Kansas State. Mason Crosby. With Lockett about eight yards deep, taking it right there. And let's get an update from Michelle. Well, the story of the game has been Michael Bennett jumping off sides, and Pete Carroll told me at halftime, we've prepared for the hard count. We have not handled it well. We have to stop jumping. As for his running game, he said it's been spotty. It's there for us. We've got to be consistent. Mike McCarthy told me Eddie Lacy is out for the night because of that ankle injury. Devontae Adams is still questionable. Overall, he said they just need to clean up communication on offense, Al. All right, thank you, Michelle. They started out. An 80 yard drive and then bogged down. Of course, the Seattle defense had a little to do with it, but then the Seattle defense was able to limit them to a field goal, not a touchdown, at the end of the half. That's Lynch who splits wide to the right, and the pass is thrown behind but caught one handed by Luke Wilson. The tight end comes out of the slot and takes it for a gain of 24 to the 44. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say they really should start working Luke Wilson. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Down the field, look at this catch, holy cow. Talking about Jimmy Graham, and we haven't seen much of him, and then Luke Wilson comes out, makes an incredible catch. That, maybe that's what they needed to jumpstart this offense. Take the Lynch. Wilson extending, Burnett can't tackle him, and then he steps out of bounds. Rogers jumps over the trash can on the sideline. And it'll be second down. Guess who? BJ Raji went right over Drew Nowak again, right up the gut here. And so forces Russell Wilson out of the pocket quickly. But I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing because we've seen a fairly static. Russell Wilson in the first half and maybe it's the plan of the Packers they were trying to box him in force him to throw from the pocket 
but he's so elusive. At some point, you want to see him out on the edge or keeping the football. That's when this offense can get jump start. That was officially a sack. Goes to Peppers because it was a one-yard loss when he scrambled out of bounds, and that's incomplete intended for Jermaine Curse. It'll be third down and 11 for the Seahawks. That one just totally got away there. So now you're backed up, and this is an offense that's really not built for third down and 11s. They want to stay on course. They want to run Marshawn Lynch and now this young offensive line that has been reshuffled is going to be challenged. Let's see if they try and get after Gary Gilliam, the right tackle who had a tough time the other night. Matthews gets the crowd stirred up. They comply happily. And Wilson stepping up in a clean pocket throws that's caught 42 yard line by Tyler Lockett for a first down Clinton Dix makes the tackle big third down conversion and that was a big play they really did need that one just going to come across here on the crossing route and it was interesting talking to Daryl Bevel he said you know we really ended up with Lockett is a guy we just got him th thinking he was going to be a kick returner and then after about Three days in camp, we're like, whoa, wait a minute now. This guy has some skills. I would expect him to be a bigger and bigger part of this offense as we go along. Four catches last week, plus a punt return touchdown. Now Wilson, and that's going to be another first down. Hits Baldwin, who's taken out of bounds there by Micah Hyde. Good opening second half drive by the Seahawks. Yeah, and sometimes you get the feeling with Russell Wilson. You just have to get him engaged a little bit. Get him out on the edge. Let him start creating some things with his legs. Take a, maybe even a hit or two during the course of running the football occasionally. And he has a way of waking up this football team when he starts running. Rolling again. And Wilson's going to take off. Tackled by Hyde after a gain of seven yards to the 20 yard line. It's just so difficult when he starts getting on the edge, even if you've got somebody over here on this side, ordinarily they can't tackle him. I, I've seen so many really great players in this league in one on one tackling situations trying to get Russell Wilson to the ground. They just can't get it done. And so here is the guy you give him a big contract. And they're doing a nice job here in the second half, just cutting them loose again. Second down and three. Wilson again off the fake the Lynch. Forced out of bounds. First down, ha ha, Clinton Dix. He spot the ball at about the 10. And there's that backside guy that is locked into play sometimes. Here they don't block the backside player at all. And so here he is, one on one. Who cares? You're not going to tackle Russell Wilson in the open field like that. So sometimes one on one is one on none. Put it right at the 10, which means it's first and goal for Seattle. Lynch stopped again, can't get on track. Dayton Jones making the tackle, loss of one second down and goal. Well, that was some play by Dayton Jones, wasn't it? Tried to cut him on the backside, and he just jumped over that whole mess and made a play. Stopping Lynch in his tracks all night long. Here he comes right over. <laughs> Gilliam tried to cut him, and he just gave him a Skeets Nehemiah move there. Just hurdled him. And second and goal. Wilson dumps it to Lynch. Just inside the 10, so it'll be third down and goal. The Green Bay defense stiffening on the opening drive of the third quarter. I'll tell you, there may be a reason they're not getting the ball to Jimmy Graham either. I, let's give a little credit to Micah Hyde, I think it was, on that one. And he is a guy that was a former cornerback who is also now in there and has the ability to take on some of these bigger, faster tight ends. He's a bit of a specialist. And he's done a good job so far on Jimmy Graham. Graham in tight on the left side. Three receivers set to the right.
And Green Bay jump. Free play, and that's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Clinton Dix came across the line. And he knows it. So that'll keep it at third Outside. down and goal. Defense, number 96. Five yard penalty, replay. Third down. Third down and goal, taking the ball to the five. Right there, just a little lean in, and of course everybody gets excited when you get in those pass rush situations, and there's Clinton Dix almost coming up with it. So once again, the offsides penalty rears its ugly head. Fred Jackson in the backfield with Wilson. Right inside there, Jimmy Graham. They're going to try and set up something for him here. Comes into the slot. Wilson looks that way. Then the other way over the middle. Caught. Touchdown, Fred Jackson. Oldest running back in the league at 34. Bills let him go. Seattle picks him up. The backup Lynch comes in on third down. Touchdown, Seattle. That's Daryl Bevel over there. Clearly was looking over here to this side. And then on the backside, the old veteran, Fred Jackson, really one of my favorite players. I, I tell you, the guy never gets any credit. I thought all those days in Buffalo, he's an honest back. He gives you exactly what you have. He understands how to read defenses. They bring him over, and he is delivering now for this football team. But that drive was all about Russell Wilson. That was sensational. Extra point by Hauschka is good three rushes seven passes they go 80 yards in a little over five minutes to turn it into a three-point game in Green Bay. heavyweight championship fight something we haven't seen since uh, the mid 80s two yards into the end zone Ty Montgomery out to the 16-yard line. Packers take the ball for the first time in the third quarter, up by a field goal. Aaron Rodgers in the first half, really the difference was his ability to draw Seattle, and in particular Michael Bennett off sides, which set up receivers on the outside, veteran like James Jones. Knew immediately what Rodgers wanted. He was going to scramble, buy some time, set up the touchdown, jump off sides again. Again, why not? It's the only time you want to throw at Richard Sherman is when you think you have an edge and there's no risk. Get the pass interference call. And, but there hasn't been much offense for Green Bay other than those kinds of plays. And this is a team that averaged almost 40 points a game at home last year. His number one defense getting it done. And went down the field on the opening drive for 80 yards for their only touchdown. This is Starks again. Lacey out for the night with an ankle injury. So Starks will be the workhorse. Second down and eight at Regina two. And you have to say some of the things that uh, Seattle has done on defense have paid off as well. Marcus Burley's done a good job as that slot cover corner. And Deshaun Shedd back in there at safety is... Filled in admirably for Cam, Cam Chancellor so far. And Devontae Adams is back, the wide receiver for Green Bay. Rodgers in trouble, throws, and throws it away out of bounds. And Aaron goes down, third down and eight. Never easy out here for this guy when you're going against Michael Bennett, but David Bakhtiari, the one thing that he is is very athletic. You don't see many guys take advantage of him athletically. Let's see what... Monte Adams, you can see that left ankle taped up now, and it's no fun playing the game like that. Third and eight. Four man rush, and Rodgers gets swallowed up for the sack at the eight yard line, and that's Bennett right there to take him down and show off to the crowd. Yeah, this is the one way you beat David Bakhtiari. You don't beat him with speed, you just bull right through him. And you saw there Michael Bennett, <laughs> it was almost like he's winding up with a punch. He took a little wide turn there and then went right through him. And on the other side, you got the same thing out of Averill. 
So they just made a uh, Roger sandwich on that one. Tim Maste with a kick toward the sideline. Lockett fields just barely inbounds and gets taken down right away at his own 45-yard line. Aaron Elliott. So a quick three and out. Seattle has the ball back. Down by three. Well, you go back to February the 1st. Head coach Pete Carroll. Offense coordinator Daryl Bevel. Quarterback Russell Wilson. Marshawn Lynch. Who a lot of people thought should have been given the ball. And turning Malcolm Butler into an all-time folk hero. In the Super Bowl, Thomas Rawls is the running back here. He's the number three back. And Russell Wilson throws, and that is caught. It's going to be a first down. Jimmy Graham. So everybody, of course, most everybody thought, you know, Lynch would be a shoo-in to score from the one. Take a look at that. 45% of his carries, one for five last year. You go back to 2007, he would rank 53rd of 60 players in rushing attempts from the one yard line. So hardly a slam dunk. And as Carroll said, maybe not the worst call of all time, but certainly the worst result ever. That was Graham's first catch for 11 yards. And here comes Wilson. And Russell Wilson down the sideline steps out of bounds at the 26. So, of course, that will go on forever and ever. You know, it's so funny, too, because I think back, Chris, to Brandon Browner, no longer in New England, but he was able to jam curse, let Butler get in there to make the interception that will be one of the great plays of all time in Super Bowl history. Yeah, and it even came up this week with Marshawn Lynch's mother making some comments about Daryl Bevel, the play caller, and asked Daryl about it, and he said, you know, it's just part of my position that but we love her and we love her fans and I have no problem at all with it. Now Wilson throwing and it is incomplete and almost picked. You had Wilson there, Nate Palmer, and Ha, -ha Clinton Dix with Luke Wilson. It was close, but Nate Palmer, let's give him some credit. Here he is right here. Had a tough game, I thought, last week, but he showed up and he was pretty good in coverage throughout and really was just in the way. I don't think there was any interference to speak of there. He just, his body was in the way, and Clinton Dix probably should have had that one. Halfway through the third quarter, second and ten. And looked like Wilson called timeout, which he did. Prior to the snap, timeout, Seattle. Their first charge timeout and a half, it will be 30 seconds. So I was uh, had a chance to talk to Terrell Bevel. Of course, I was critical too. I thought they you? should have taken I know, taken advantage. It was almost a free play on second down, right in the Super Bowl. And and uh, I said uh, I said, well, you know, I, I thought you were either going to give it to Lynch or have Russell Wilson on the edge. I had it narrowed down to those two plays. And when he stood up to pass it, I thought it was a quarterback draw. And Daryl said, so I surprised you with the play call? And I said, yeah. He said, is that necessarily a bad thing? And I said, no. <laughs> and we kind of had a laugh. I got to give him credit. He's been under siege here lately. But the guy at least has a good sense of humor, and he's taken him to the Super Bowl and back-to-back -back years. So maybe a, a little overcooked on Daryl Bevel. Agreed. Second down and 10 for the 26. Fired. Caught. First down, 13-yard line, Chris Matthews. Remember him from the Super Bowl? Didn't catch one pass during the regular season. Inactive for a lot of the year. And then he catches four passes for over 100 yards in the biggest game of all. Yeah, and don't forget about the onside kick that he recovered to give him a chance to make that comeback. But Matthews was, he's a big guy. He made the play with a sort of a jump ball down on the goal line right before the half, so maybe they're going to get him engaged again. So Rawls in the backfield, Lynch still on the sideline, and Wilson throws, and that's caught. Touchdown, Doug Baldwin. And the Seahawks, who were down 10-0 early, it's a 13-yard touchdown, a quick 54 yards in five plays to take the lead. I love the savvy veteran route here. Watch this. Going to come out, give a little stick to the outside. A lot of patience on that move. Give him a little push right off there, and 
Now, I tell you, since Russell Wilson took off and started running the ball and scrambling and doing some of the things that he's always been noted for, now they're coming back inside, throwing from the pocket. This offense is now set up, and they've been going up and down the field. And doing it mainly without Lynch, who wasn't even on that drive, 28 yards rushing, and with Jimmy Graham basically silent. Hauschka's extra point is good, and with 6.48 to go in the third quarter, the Seahawks have their first lead of the night, 17-13. All right, Blake, and congratulations to your show, The Voice One on Emmy tonight. Maybe we should go out on tour with, with Blake. Hey, a couple goodbye of weeks me. Uh, country music, you know oh, me. Yeah. That's my stuff there. You, me, Blake, and Juice Newton. What do you think? Go for it. <laughs> He's a funny guy on that show, man. That is yeah. Mr. Entertainment on that show. And it's a bouncing ball that will just get in to the end zone for a touchback. Almost went out of bounds at the one, which would have brought it back out of the 40. Quarterback in Parison tonight. So the numbers, completions, and attempts, very similar. So are the yards. Of course, Aaron did most of his damage early. That first drive was brilliant. But since then, a different story. Yeah, I, I, I haven't seen this offense struggle the way that they have. Of course, you're talking about the number one scoring defense. And now they've got to kick it back into gear. They started off hot and really have not done much since. And up at the 26, that's caught. Devontae Adams, second down and four. And Devontae Adams is, you know, he's toughing it out and he's sort of faking his way through it, but he's not nearly the threat now with that ankle injury and of course Jordy Nelson on IR with the ACL and preseason so they're getting a little thin on the outside. Scotch. Big hole exploits it into Seattle territory and finally shoved out of bounds at the 39 yard line by Carrie Williams. On a second and four, he goes 35 yards. Great job inside right here. We talked about T.J. Lang, one of the best guards in football. Corey Lindsley came over and knocked him out, and you just do not see holes that size in the National Football League. Good running by James Starks to take advantage. And almost never against the Seahawks. Starts again. A couple of tough yards to the 37 yard line. Second down and eight. You know, you have two hot quarterbacks in this game, and Mike McCarthy, it was fun to listen to him talk about Aaron Rodgers. He has seen some of the greatest of the greats and worked with him over the years, and he just doesn't think anybody's playing at the level that Aaron Rodgers is right now. Packs it in, dives, picks up the first down. Well, the one thing about Aaron Rodgers is we've seen over the years, if you're going to rush four, by default, that means there is going to be one gap open to run, and he finds it almost every time. Almost no blitzing from Seattle tonight, just that standard four-man rush. And this time it's good enough to put the heat on him. And then he throws and the pass is thrown out of bounds. James Jones covered well that time by Carrie Williams, second down. Well, there has been, there are times that if you watch game tape of Aaron Rodgers, you can't believe he escapes. That was one of those times. He was getting a high load on that one. And it's what they call Chris Richard, the defensive coordinator, said it was the craftiness of Aaron Rodgers inside the pocket that scares me most. Starts again. We'll get stopped after a minimal game. K.J. Wright was there. 
It'll be third down and nine for the Packers. Clements sending in the play call. Of course, Rodgers can check out of anything he wants at any time. Randall Cobb, typically the guy in the slot that gets a lot of action in this scenario, but so far tonight, not a lot of balls thrown his way. A hard count. Seahawks line is anxious, trying to stay on side, which they do. And he escapes. Now Starks makes the catch, but goes nowhere, thanks to Bobby Wagner. Makes the tackle at the 26-yard line, which will set up about a 44-yard field goal attempt. Yeah, when this guy starts doing this stuff, it gets scary. I, uh, Tom Brady in the Super Bowl saw a couple of those coming running right down his throat, too. And Bobby Wagner, there aren't many guys that have been born that can play the run as well as he does inside, but also sprint and run after tight ends and running backs, and he's every bit as fast as they are. 44-yard attempt for Crosby. And he is three for three. Both coaches. Yeah, no, the, 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 crowd, the crowd thought that Seattle was offside. Don't see a flag. In a rivalry that only dates back 110 years. <laughs> Where were they? So 17-16. crowd, as we said, as you have a touchback here, thought that Seattle was offside. Even if they were, there was no flag. They probably would have declined it. Because it was a fourth and eight. We'll take a look again. It was fourth and eight. So here is Sherman. Is he off or not? There was no flag. It's close. But even had he been offside, it would have been declined because it would have been fourth and three, and they would have taken the field goal anyway. How hot has that guy been? Come out here in the second half. Nothing really seemed to be working. He started running the football. A couple of bootlegs, a few big passes, and here we go. So 50 straight regular season games in which the Hawks have had a lead that's every one of Wilson's games. So that's uh, three seasons plus two games. 3-12. Lynch is back in the game. He wasn't in on the last drive. The Baldwin has scored the touchdown in motion to the inside, and the pass goes to Doug Baldwin up to the 25-yard line. Hyde makes the tackle. The numbers on Russell Wilson since halftime. Well, there he goes, and when he started running the football, you could just feel the energy of this offense go up, taking him right down the field, a couple of bootlegs, not even looking to throw there. He's just tucking that thing and running. And I know he just got paid a bunch of money, and you don't want the guy to get hurt, but you got to let him play his game, and that's his game. He got to his game in the second half. Second down and five. Wilson again off that play fake to the 33-yard line. Hayward makes the tackle there, first down. And, and this is what you do. I mean, this is the unblocked guy again. He's going to come down. Marshawn Lynch is a beast, and you got to go tackle him and all that kind of stuff. But you see Julius Peppers, who's a great athlete, was really in position to make that play. But Russell Wilson is just that quick and that elusive, and he knows how to protect himself. He knows how to get down. So you don't have to worry so much about is getting hurt maybe as much as some of these other quarterbacks. Two minutes to the end of the quarter. And Wilson able to avoid a sack and turns what would have been a sack into a seven-yard game before he's finally brought down by Nate Palmer. Second down and three. Isn't it interesting that we're seeing Aaron Rodgers with all the movement in the first half and Russell Wilson with all the movement in the second half. And, and even though they're starting to get a little closer with some of the pressure, it gets really frustrating for pass rushers when they beat their guy and they still can't get that quarterback on the ground. And both of these guys can do that to pass rushers. Stuttering star for the Seattle offense club. And now Wilson on the ground, 61 yards on seven carries. And it's fumbled. Ball is loose. Lynch, flag is down. Lynch lost the ball. Penalty, you got a penalty after the play as well, with Daniels involved in that, but a flag went down at the outset of the play and then one right after the play. Burnett comes away saying, we've got it. 
So one danger of that read option play is that the quarterback decides at the point of the handoff and sometimes mess it up. So for, for starters, they're untangling to see who has the ball. Only the Packer players have signaled that they have it. Nothing yet from the Zebras. You're going to get two separate fouls on the play. One at the outset and one post. We've seen one simultaneous possession game decided between these two teams. Well, you got Lynch there, and then you got Mike Neal there. Looked like Neal came away with the ball, but all depends on the initial penalty, at least in terms of whether Green Bay will have possession or not. Take a look at it. The mesh point of this read option is so difficult. Hits him a little high. It was a little bit higher than you typically want to make it. There are multiple fouls on the play. Initially, we have offside. Defense number 64 lined up in the neutral zone. We will accept that foul. The other foul in the game is a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct foul on number 76 of the defense for pulling an opponent off the pile. Because that is after the play, that play will be that foul will be declined. We'll accept the offside five yards with the result in a first down for Seattle. That's Mike Pinnell, the defensive end 64. He was offside, negating the fumble. Right there, you can see head across. That's the initial one. And then, I'm, then Mike Daniels. This is something that they have changed this year. It doesn't look like much, but anytime you're pulling people off the pile, they saw last year there were some fights that started based mm -hmm. on people doing that. So they said, all right, we're not going to have that this year. And we've already seen it a couple of times now this year that they've called that penalty. Yeah, you can't turn the opponent into a wishbone. Ball at the 44-yard line. Crowd upset. Minute nine to go in the period. First down from the 44. Play clock 4 3. And it runs all the way out. So a the delay time. here. Seattle calls timeout. Well, it's the second of the half. And it will be a 30 second timeout. They saw the clock going to nothing take a timeout before they got the delay and that's their second timeout of the half down to one watch Clay Matthews here now you've got one linebacker Nate Palmer already up but it is giving Clay Matthews and again Troy Polamalu is kind of what I think of a guy that you're going to try and send as many different ways as you possibly can and you know you give up something great Clay Matthews coming off the edge as a pass rusher is great but now Dom Capers is saying well if that's great why don't we do some things now that he's on the inside where he can rush from any one of a number of different areas and attack the defense so in the game last week against Chicago I saw him do about as many things as I've ever seen a linebacker do in one game used to be outside all the time I was just sure that not graphic almost always inside at least tonight Playing the middle linebacker role here, and Wilson gets pressured and then throws it away because Jones put the heat on him. Proud, of course, wants a grounding penalty because they think he wasn't outside the tackle box. That was close. Yeah, you, you could if you're outside the tackle box, you can throw it away. It's not a penalty, and the crowd looking at that, and they certainly know their football. And, and Green Bay. So they're going to say somebody was in the area. I, I always thought he was in the tackle box. Just because you go backwards doesn't mean anything. I guess they're going to say that uh, Chris Matthews was in the area, but I don't think you're going to convince anybody in this stadium of that. He was in the area of Sheboygan. <laughs> Second and ten. And then Wilson throws, and that's incomplete. Lynch. The intended receiver again the heat put on Wilson Packers getting good pressure up front third and ten. Yeah they tried to run that same pick play that they ran in the championship game to get 
Marshawn Lynch down the boundary there, but once again, a good job. Nate Palmer has been in the right position a lot tonight in coverage. I think he's still learning how to play inside linebacker when it comes to playing the run, but in coverage, he's been pretty solid. Spread it out on third and ten. Wilson deep downfield and incomplete. Doug Baldwin high covering on the play fourth down. Well, this is a tough ask right here, boy, for anybody. Micah Hyde right over here, just one on one. There's nobody down the field. He's really a first class punt returner, but in this game, he has done a job, not only on Jimmy Graham, but on a very big play right there. Ryan averaging 44 yards on his four kicks. This one a little shorter. Fair catch call for made at the 20 yard line. 36 yard punt. Well, you know, we saw it when the schedule came out. Seattle, Green Bay, you know, Sunday night football. We knew it comes early in the season. When you go back to that game last year, that will be remembered forever, along, of course, with the Super Bowl. Still might be, you know, who knows at this point, two best teams in the NFC. What do you think? Uh, yeah, absolutely a possibility here. Of course, a long way to go with this thing. But I've really been impressed with Seattle. They've come in here on the road. They've had the advantage of playing there with their 12th man, 12s, I guess they're calling them now. But to come on the road into this stadium and slow this offense down, we don't see that very often. And we've done a bunch of games here. And they trail 10 nothing early. Green Bay, of course, has their own 12. And he'll take the snap from the shotgun. And hand the ball to Starks, and Starks will get wrapped up from behind. Tackle made by Jordan Hill. Second and ten. Rogers almost unbeatable here. His 11th season, but he was a starter in 2008 for the first time. Six and six in his first 12 starts. Since, all he does is win 12 times for every loss. 36 and three. Well, here we go again. Now, now you got to cross the line of scrimmage for an, for the offense to be able to jump. Offense number 69. Yeah, good Five call. Penalty, second down. There was movement, but if it if he doesn't cross the line of scrimmage, then you can't jump. Let's take a look here. Definite movement. Well, it's the end of the third quarter. Seattle outscores in 14-3 in the period. Sunday Night Football resumes after this. High above Lambeau Field. Green Bay tonight's aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Michelle DeFoy, our whole gang, Fred Gidelli, Drew Essekoff calling the shots. And a big crowd of 78-4-3-3. Regular season record at Lambeau, 310 consecutive Sellouts. It's about 40 years worth. That's all. Second and 15 as we start the fourth quarter. And Rodgers fires caught wide open. Randall Cobb. And that moves to six. Tackled by Carey Williams. Gain of 18 first down. It's a really good understanding that time by Aaron Rodgers. Seeing the seam was there. You don't want to lead your guy up the field in any way, shape, or form and get him hurt going up the field but here he goes right here and now just settle in there as a wide receiver just got it around Bobby Wagner on the inside one point game Cobb moves into the slot five wide here Aaron getting out of bounds in front of the Seahawk bench. Ruben runs him out. Gains a couple second down and eight. Yeah, Richard Sherman uh, was walking the line here again, but he's going to get some help here over the top from Deshaun Shedd, the safety. Maybe Aaron was just a little uncomfortable with that one. You know, Deshaun Shedd's a guy, a name we should throw out here because he basically is replacing K. 
Cam Chancellor in this one. Deion Bailey played there a week ago, gave up a big touchdown. But uh, so far, Deshaun Shedd has, has played pretty well. And you can tell that because you haven't said his name a whole lot. Sure. And that's caught. And breaking away is Cobb for a long game in the Seattle Territory. Broke away from the grasp of Earl Thomas and Roger says let's get to the line and run the next play in a 19 and this is what you've got to do when you've got a great player like Randall Cobb a pro bowler just get him in space again a one on one like we were talking about Russell Wilson sometimes you don't have to win the battle you just want to get your guy the ball in a one on one situation and give him a chance hard to tackle Randall Cobb in the open field. Now well, he's sitting there in the backfield with Aaron Rodgers. And a flip. And taking Seahawks with him, Richard Rodgers. Got a pass early, his first grab since then. And that's a gain of nine to make it second down and one. It's one of those new plays that first time I ever saw it was with Green Bay. Maybe somebody did it before that. But basically, these guys are just going to come down and block. They don't even turn around and look for a pass. Of course, you've got to throw the ball immediately to the next guy or else it's offensive pass interference. They run it as well as anybody. And then the yards after the catch, key there. This is sort of a free down now for Aaron Rodgers. Second down and short. A lot of options. Both Rodgers, Cal guys. California. That's a first down on the second and one as Randall Cobb makes the grab. So just about into field goal range. First down to the 34-yard line. It's fun to watch these two quarterbacks work. They're not they're not the same kind of guys, but in some ways they are. They have the same sort of physical skill set. And you just get the feeling that more experience Russell Wilson gets, the more he's going to look like Aaron Rodgers down the road. Rodgers sends Cobb out to the left. Five wide here. Quick throw. Caught. And bouncing his way for a first down is Ty Montgomery. The rookie from Stanford picked in the third round. Rogers says, let's keep it up, keep the pace up. First time Montgomery, the kick return guy. Here he is. Watch these guys. They're just going to come out here and block. Same sort of a deal. Maybe a little hold by Devontae Adams on that one. But you get your kick returner kind of guys. Randall Cobb just a second ago. Now Ty Montgomery in space and let him go. Out of the 17. Richard Rodgers in the backfield with him. And another quick throw, and this time it's Montgomery again. Maybe a yard. Burley makes the tackle. 10.50 to go in regulation. I can't remember. Can you remember seeing a blitz tonight out of Seattle? Yeah, I was just, I said it before that I, 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 they, everything was a four man rush. You know, and you got those maybe four guys one. rushing. Maybe you don't feel like you need to, but I mean, this is as basic, just simple a defense. Spread it out, and it's pretty much been that way through the last three coordinators. Mm -hmm. Second it? down and eight. Of course, the players are pretty good. Got a four-man rush. And the flag is thrown. Now the question is going to be: Was it catchable to begin with? James Jones. You got Williams who's carrying on about the flag. Well, one of the hard parts of that illegal contact call is, you know, where is the Prior five the yards? Pass. Illegal contact, defense, number 26, five-yard penalty, automatic, first so, down. So you're going to get the out and up here, and now at the top end of this one, Kerry Williams is going to give him a shove, and I think even Kerry would say, you're going to say, yeah, he did, but it was probably at six yards. But we know now the officials have been instructed, you know, the rule's five yards, and we're going to call it a five. And it couldn't have been pass interference because the, it was an uncatchable ball that Rodgers had thrown, so they get the five-yard penalty. Automatic first down, obviously, first and goal from the 10. Quick flip again to the outside. Five-yard gain, Ty Montgomery. 
big factor on this drive, second down and goal. You know, one of the reasons I think that Seattle is just staying in that zone, you don't want to end up in man-to-man -man against some of those looks because if your man gets picked or whatever, you walk in the end zone. So you want some people to be able to tackle. And as you get closer down to the goal line now, the space that they have to work those plays is much smaller and you have more people in range to make the tackles. As Green Bay found out at the end of the first half when they couldn't get it in, had to set up for the field goal. That's they had to walk the one-yard line. Second and goal. This time a three-man rush. Rodgers fires and it is caught for the touchdown. Richard Rodgers. Working on Kerry Williams and again extending the play. Moving against the grain. Lambo leap coming. Green Bay has the lead again. This time we're going to go three-man rush and drop Michael Bennett out. But again, anytime you get a three-man rush against a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, what is he going to do? There are massive holes for him to move around, but he's not looking to run here. He's looking to throw, and there's Rodgers just working back to the football. And for Kerry Williams, you know, to try and cover anybody in this league for four, five, six seconds gets to be too much. Well, let's see. Of course, all scoring plays are reviewed. Taking a look at this one. Go for two here. Turn a five-point lead into a seven-point lead. And it's the touchdown Five confirmed four. under the league average. The league average is 48%. McCarthy's team's averaging 39%. Five wide on the conversion. and the flag is thrown caught anyway by Richard Rodgers. Beats Bobby Wagner. Defensive foul. Forget about it. So Rodgers gets six and then he adds two more. It's just amazing for me to watch Aaron Rodgers throw from his different, many different angles as he does. Defense, number 54. The penalty is the time of his own to play. Successful PAT. Timeout. Seven point game. He's soon to be thrown submarine. 24 17. Read back. With a history there and to the current day, you saw Farm, you saw Reggie White, great traditions here in Green Bay. Packer fans lending their bikes to players during training camp. Lock it from five yards in, and that Green Bay coverage unit doing an excellent job to bottle him up all night. Seven point game, Wilson, with the ball, and we come back. This is Sunday night. And Sunday night, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks trying to avoid an 0 2 start. Had the lead, had given it up, down by 7 now. 9 23 left. Pick up the blitz, hand the ball off to Marshawn Lynch to the 23. Old fashioned shootout in here in Lambeau Field tonight between two great quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers just can contort his body any which way he wants to. And Russell Wilson, once he started running and getting engaged in this game, he just took over a couple of great drives back to back, then started doing it with his arm. And Aaron Rodgers answers, and now it's back on Russell Wilson. And Lynch again. And Lynch bowling his way. Went to Central Marshawn Lynch. Yards after contact. He's terrific at that first down up at the 31 yard line. Yeah, and it's one of the things we always see when you're talking about Marshawn Lynch. Anytime you get into the fourth quarter and they are still in the game and it's still close, tackling that guy gets harder and harder because the energy level has gone down. You're a little tired on defense. You start reaching. And arm tackles aren't enough on that big guy. He comes out for the moment. Thomas Rawls comes in. Working at a Central Michigan free agent. 
That's Walsh flanking Wilson and fakes the handoff and that defense sticks with the quarterback and Mike Neal is there to knock him down at the line of scrimmage. Beautifully done by Mike Neal that time. Just sits right there on the line of scrimmage. He's just going to wait. He knew who he had and he stays flat down the line of scrimmage. He was not fooled on that one. Did not try and jump the gun. So now at least mission accomplished for Russell Wilson. He's getting those ends, those unblocked guys to stay home on that read option. Loss of two halfway through the quarter. Second down and 12. Take it to Rawls. Wilson time flushed out. Keeps his eyes downfield. Packs it in and picks up the first down. Both guys just they extend plays, improvise, pick up needed first downs. Right here, Russell Wilson, prime example. You know, great players can sometimes take a mess and turn it into something great. There was really nothing there. And Russell Wilson just refused to take no for an answer. And there we go again. We've seen it so many times. Nate Palmer, one-on-one, -on -one is one-on-none when you're talking about Russell Wilson running the football and Seahawk player down. Check it out when we come back. 7-12 to go in the fourth. Detroit and the Denver Broncos come to town with a 2 0 record. And Peyton Manning coming off that tremendous finish in Kansas City where he birdied 16 and 17 and then eagled 18 to pull out the win against Kansas City. When we went to commercial, J.R. Sweezy was the injured Seahawk, the right guard, but he got up, trotted off the field, threw back shortly. He has to come out at least for one play. Alvin Bailey takes his spot. Marshawn Lynch is back in the game. It's first down. Uh oh. Ah! and intercepted Elliott, Jaron Elliott, and he fumbles the ball after he picks it off. So who has possession now? Definitely a fumble. It's just a matter of who's going to come out of this scrum. What a great play. And then lose it on the back end of it. Green Bay has it. Now Brett walks off the field with it and says, how can they have it? Take a look. Just going to be a simple little screen pass. And J. Ron Elliott is just going to one-hand the thing out of midair. And then Gilliam is going to strip it away from him. I don't know what happened after that. Well, clearly he fumbles. And who comes up with the ball at the bottom of that pile? I don't know. But Justin Brett came walking out of it. And he certainly was right there. So it's a turnover. They're reviewing it anyway. So you don't need a challenge. You should look at all turnovers. And there you had an initial turnover and then maybe a second one. But it's ruled and you couldn't tell conclusively who wound up with Elliott's fumble. But they're going to give it to Green Bay and they have the ball at the 37 yard line. We love to see guys that work their way up through the ranks, and certainly that is J. Ron Elliott. He was their second leading special teams guy a year ago. Starts. Turns it into an eight yard gain around the right side. Tackled by Thomas. Flag on the play. It'll be second down and two. And now you got a scrum. And another flag coming in. I only see three flags on the field. Lang without his helmet. The old Keith Jackson line, a couple of teams that don't like each other very much. Mm. Thought you're going to throw in a couple of big uglies there as well. <laughs> in the trenches. Right is number 50. Richard Rogers is involved there, 82 as well. 
Well, Richard Rogers, I think, was going to get the flag if he didn't retaliate. Now it's probably going to offset. One poor official, he threw his flag, he threw his hat, he threw everything out there. But this, it, you're starting to feel the raw emotion of this rivalry, and there's nothing natural about this rivalry except where they've been two of the best teams for a while now, and they've played such important games. I think Aaron now is saying that it's going to offset. Sarasota has had a lot of explaining to do tonight. We have fouls by both teams on the play. We have a dead ball personal foul. Defense number 50. We also have a dead ball personal foul. Offense number 70. Number. We also have a dead ball personal foul. Defense number 72. Those penalties are going to offset. However, the action by defense number 50 of pulling the face mask off of his opponent. Number 50 is ejected from the ball game. And it will be second down and green goal. That is a big loss, KJ Wright. So even though Seattle had two penalties, Green Bay had one offsetting, but they lose Wright. Exactly take it off, but I guess he did everything but. But KJ Wright now is going to have to leave the field, and what he does and what Cam Chancellor does is a little bit of the same sort of play, and so now they're down two of those guys that can cover and play the run, and so now they're down to Kevin Pierre Lewis to come in and they got to get this football back. And that is a significant drop off. Second down and two with six and a half left in the fourth. Starts. And Roman work tonight to the 24. Remember, Lacey got hurt early, ankle injury, out for the game. Their next game is in eight days. They've got the extra Davies. They play the Monday night or next week against Kansas City. Starks, meanwhile, 16 carries tonight. For 87 yards. Yeah, he, he really has done a nice job, don't you think? I mean, this is a good offensive line, and we understand that. But they had to establish a run against these pass rushers on the other side. And even with Eddie Lacy out, he has done enough to slow him down a bit. Hey, you going, Father? Do get the playoff. And this time taken down behind the line of scrimmage. That's Jordan Hill, third year back out of Penn State, who stops him. That is some play by Jordan Hill. And that was a, uh, he had a major impact at the end of last season. This is him coming all the way across here like that. But he, what did he have, like five and a half sacks in the last six games and then got hurt and wasn't able to take part in the playoffs? and. But he is an electric player, and if he can stay healthy this year, certainly adds a new dimension to that pass rush inside. Pops up Brandon Meebane up front. Second down and 11. Starts again to take the ball to the 20 yard line. Rodgers milking the clock here. Hill again in on the tackle, clearly within field goal range, which would make it a two possession game. Third down. We've seen good stuff tonight out of the center, Corey Lindsley here too. He is a big, strong, physical presence, and with the two guards with Lang and Sitton outside of him, they really hold that pocket inside, which allows Aaron Rodgers to drop deep and then step up because usually there's not a lot of penetration amongst those three. Rodgers taking the play clock all the way down, and then he takes a timeout. But he's able to take 40 ticks off the game clock. So timeout. Green Bay has two. Looking at Seattle is down to one. They've already used two in the half. When they get the ball back, 24 to 17. With a third and six coming up. Last three games against the Seahawks. Take a look at his numbers. I mean, his numbers are fantastic across the board 
normally that weren't in the NFC Championship game. He played that game, you'll recall, with that calf strain as he did throughout the playoffs, Dallas, the week before that. Tonight, back on target, 24 to 32 for 75 percent. MVP of the league last year. You know, and ordinarily you'd say a field goal here and maybe it gets out of reach, but after we watched that championship game last year, I'm not sure I'll ever use the words out of reach again. Not in this rivalry. Now you got Randall Cobb. Check it, check it. Richard Rogers in the back. Here Cobb comes into the slot on third down and six. And Rogers fires, has his open man. First and goal. Catch is made by Ty Montgomery. He's at a big head. Well, I, I've just got to talk about these guys one more time up front. I know they've got a backup in and Barclay there, but this is an extremely talented group of pass rushers. But all night long now, they have provided enough time for Aaron Rodgers. And even when they missed, Aaron Rodgers has found ways to step up and through and around. Michael Bennett, the great pass rusher inside. They have just done a job. A very, very talented bunch up front. And taking the play clock down to the nub on first and goal. And he has to take another timeout. So timeout Green Bay, and now down to one with three and a half to go. Rodgers had a couple of free plays tonight with offside against Seattle and both times he decided or on two of those occasions to throw Sherman's way one completion for 29 and then the big 52 yard penalty for pass interference against Sherman toward the end of the first half. But the only two he threw that way was when he knew he had a free play. J.C. Treader is an eligible receiver on the end of the line of scrimmage, number 73. And Stark swinging to the outside, and he will get pushed back, kept inbounds. Taya Rubin, can more as a free agent from Cleveland, makes the tackle. They'll be under three minutes when we have our next snap. Well, the Seattle Seahawks, each of the last three games, the NFC Championship game, the Super Bowl, and last week at the Rams, losing a fourth quarter lead, even though in the NFC Championship game, they took the lead, lost it at the end, went to overtime, and in the past, the curse won it. Super Bowl we all know about. Last week happened in St. Louis, and on the verge of maybe happening tonight, they were up 17-16 with the Seahawks at the end of three. Starks again. Wagner stops him at the four yard line. Seattle was just that one timeout plus the two minute warning. And this is when all those timeouts that get wasted early come back to haunt. They take their final timeout right here. Then the next stoppage is the two minute warning. And they'll try to obviously hold them to a field goal and then you've got possession you'd be down two possessions of course you'd be thinking about an onside kick if you scored we all know what happened in Seattle yep a little bit of the same situation we saw a week ago I, I think this is one of those you're in almost automatic field goal range so don't be afraid to let Aaron Rodgers take a look and see if he finds something where he can throw the football and if he doesn't then, you know, don't throw it away and stop the clock. Just go ahead and take the sack and kick the field goal. See, when has that happened before? Mm. So third down and goal now. So Jones wide to the right. Adams is wide to the left. Again going empty backfield. Fox again rush four and Rodgers takes off but can only get to the three. So that's going to make it fourth down and goal. They're going to hold him to a field goal attempt. And that will come on the other side of the two minute warning. 
That was another good play by Jordan Hill, I believe it was that time. Sort of took Lindsley right back into Aaron Rodgers had he not. I think Rodgers would have navigated that one for a touchdown. So two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter with a field goal attempt coming up when we come back to Lambeau Field. So Mason Crosby will have a 21 yard field goal attempt and for the Seattle Seahawks if you've got a good kick block in that book this is when you bring it out to match day to hold I'm trying to make it a 10 point two possession lead and he does to make it 27 to 17. So coming up right after the game Volkswagen post game report Michelle on the field of course with the stars of the game Bob Tony and Mike breaking it down looking around the league as well and then Chris and I with a look ahead to next Sunday's matchup in Detroit between the Lions and the Broncos right after the game. So you need two scores. They can come in either order of course because you're going to have to have an onside kick as well at some point and recover that. Rodgers, how's that for a fourth quarter? Nine, nine, nine. Not always, always looks like he's under control, doesn't he? Just always sort of looks like he's. He is. He has a coolest guy in the room kind of a, yeah. kind of a deal. Yep. It's hard to believe he sat there on draft day and <laughs> watched the entire league pass on him. And he never forgot about it either. You know, that's a really good point. A lot of great players in this league. They've managed to carry a chip with them for a long time and it serves them well. And he always knows how to settle down the fan base as well. They get off to a bad start a couple of years ago. They went down for a Sunday night game in Houston. And the kick they pushed Lockett to the corner of the end zone. And he walked into the room and said to us, he said, hey, you know, outside the sky is falling, but inside we're just fine. And then last year when they started out one and two, he goes on the radio and he says, R E L A X, relax. And he was right then too. I'll tell you, a little burst from Seattle offensively in the third quarter, but for the most part against this team, it's been a pretty good night for Dom Capers bunch. There's the surprise to me is that. Jimmy Graham, I, I don't know that they quite have all the timing figured out and how to use them exactly yet, but I think in a game like this, you certainly would have hoped for more production from him. Three receivers set to the right with Graham in the middle. And that pass is caught up at the 26-yard line. Doug Baldwin, short game. Green Bay will give him only one on those types of throws. Takes some time off the clock, makes it second down. And three. Down to a minute 35 and ticking down. And that is caught up at the 43. That's a first down. No timeouts for them. Baldwin makes the catch. Wilson up at the 43 yard line. A minute 20 and under. Taking a lot of time here. And Wilson will take off. Get to the 49. Perry tackles him. They get into field goal range. They'll probably try the field goal first. Save a little bit of time and then try to get the onside kick and then they'll have to score a touchdown. I'm not sure the fan base here could take another onside kick though. Nope. Second down and four. And a throw, and that's going to be caught by Lynch, but that clock keeps on moving as they don't use the sideline. Green Bay tries to take it away, 43. Now Wilson wants to get up there and spike it to save some time. And that'll stop the clock, but you're under a half minute to 29 seconds. But I like your strategy. I think that you take another 10-yard play if you have it. And you try the field goal, hit the onside kick, and then throw a few Hail Marys. Yep, that's the way to do it. But I think they got to think about using the sideline, too. You've got to stop that clock.
put three seconds back on it. So it's 32 seconds. Second down and 10. Fred Jackson in there. Lynch on the sideline. Wilson going over the middle. They got Jackson. And he loses the ball. And that's going to write a finish to it. There's your hero. Yep, Elliott. Elliott knocked it out. He had the interception, then he knocked it out. And that's going to put a wrap on it. Well, there's nothing that defensive coordinators like better than hustle winning a game. Jaron Elliott was on the pass rush, turned and hustled back down the field, stripped the football out. Thank you very much. Game over. The tomahawk shot. They practice this. Every team does. And when you can gain from behind on a running back and they don't see it coming, almost impossible to prevent that from happening. Here was the interception that happened earlier. Pretty special night for that young man. Well, last year, because Seattle won an opening night, they owned a head-to-head -head tiebreaker with Green Bay. Dallas, Green Bay, and Seattle all wound up 12 and 4. This year. Green Bay will own that tie break by virtue of this win tonight. So the Packers go to 2 0. The Seahawks will go home to face Chicago and Detroit the next two weeks. They're on this NFC North tour, are 0 and 2. Today for Mike McCarthy, who was so confident going into that championship game, he really thought they had him wired. To lose that one was the ultimate heartbreak. Not a full measure of revenge, but it has to feel pretty good. Packers win it. Post game coming up.